Hello, Grungies are on view, this time for our sale on the 31st of October. And so it's a kind of Halloween sale. Uh, it's not a big sale, it's only 600 lots. Uh, we're in the smalls room, we'll work our way around some furniture, and just have a dib about, won't we dear? Yes dear. Yes, and see what we can find. Uh, there's a few pictures by this artist, Rosa Branson. Um, does this have a title? Going for a walk, it's called. Mm. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, it's lot 1647. I think the estimates are modest, sort of 50 to 80 or something like that. There's mm. a few of them scattered through the sale. Uh, many other... Oh, look, walking sticks. You yeah, could do walk... with some of those today. Walking sticks, yeah. yeah. It's quite smart, isn't it? Yes. This is lot 1282. Um, there's a very small... Actually, they're more like canes, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, quite elegant, aren't very they? Very debonair, yeah. Um, that's not a bad lot. So that one has a sort of mark on it suggesting it is got some degree of gold overlay. Hmm. There's a rather smart little hooky silver mounted, those look like Victorian marks to me. Then you've got a plain wood one of some quality hmm. and another with a little nice. loopy thing in a kind of coromandel type wood that's quite substantial. So there we go, four reasonably nice canes, lot 1282. Hmm. Uh, what else did we glance at? I liked these, 1630. Oh, these are nice, aren't they? These are funky. These are from, um, they've come down through the family and the, the family business was postcards and Christmas cards and greetings cards. And so they have all these old designs and these are by someone called Veronica Venus, 1950s, 60s. Great fun. That's great, isn't it? That buzz yeah. off, lovely with the Lambretta. Yeah. Um, it must be a record. Uh, what else do we have? One more. Um, hold on to your hat. Great. Fun, fun. aren't they? They're yeah. quite nice. Lot 1630, modest estimate, 60 to 80 pounds. Um, perhaps something for a sort of vintage collector or vintage items. Uh, if you like Martin Ware birds but don't have 30,000 pounds kicking about in your bank account, then uh, here's an opportunity. These You've are got, so funny. These yeah. are, these, when they're Martin Ware, they're called Wally birds. And typically they have these detachable heads that don't serve much of a purpose other than having being detachable. Um, and this lot has, there's an anonymous English potted job. The <laughs> rather scary looking owl has a monogram. Gosh. Um, there's a few more here. And in with it, you get some other bits like just this uh, spectacular frog knopped. Italian pot, you get a bit of pewter, it's uh, by Roundhead Pewter. So it's all sort of what we'd call, I suppose, lesser manufacturers. That looks like Dalton. Life in the Forest of Sherwood, yes it is, it's Dalton. Um, tobacco jar there with the lid that will compress down to keep it airtight. Ah. Yeah, yeah, all more cons. Um, perhaps Dal uh, Carlton or Crown Devon. Carlton over the back there, sort of Rouge Royale. So a nice mixed lot of pottery for your money with the Wally Birds, 1323, estimate 40 to 60 pounds. Doesn't great. seem dear and you could <laughs> spread those around the family. <sighs> Something else I thought modest estimate, ought to make more, this little bronze. I'm going to move the tape, remind staff training on Monday. Uh, lot 1260. She's very pretty. She's nice, isn't she? She's yeah. what we say of the period. So she's late 19th, early 20th century. She is by... Mongin, M-E-N-G-I-N, French sculpture, fully recorded, um, got his details and dates on the catalogue description. She's just been booked in at 50 to 80, but I think she's, you know, a good 150 to 200 or more. That's lot 1260. Next to it, that caught your eye, didn't it? Yes. So this is a nice bit That's of surprising. Tunbridge wear, yeah. good rich colour. Um, oh, look, we've got the maker, Barton. Late nigh of the Mount Ephraim and Parade Tunbridge Wells, so that's mm. nice. Uh, what don't we like? We've lost some edging around here. Um, what is it? It's a little casket to put things in. Oh. Three drawers oh. with the original knobs. Um, just nice condition, and there's even a, I spotted a key in the bottom drawer. Pretty. Twelve fifty nine. Yeah, I think it's in at one hundred hundred and fifty. <laughs> Could it make more? Well, it could make a bit more, but I think it needs a picture of a more interesting decoration to make much more. William Scott. Nice print, this. It's, you can see what it is. Busby. When you know what it is, you can see what it is in this yes. example. Busby, it's perhaps slightly oh, faded, it. and we can see a few dirt specks, although some of these are on the glass or little insect dirt trapped between the glass and the print rather than the print itself. Um, no sign of any obvious foxing, perhaps probably slightly evenly discoloured on this unprinted paper, but still a nice thing. Only 50 of them made, 
prices jump around a bit from sort of 500 to 1200 this one's in 700 to a thousand pounds so one of the more nice. highly estimated items um, something a bit different next to it, Yuko Shiryashi, from the same ownership as that other one. Nice clean condition, sort of 150 to 200 on that lot, 1633. Then you're not going to mention my heavy ram. No, I well, you got to think about it's, this. Well, only because it's so oh, heavy. That's how I got my hernia. It's yeah. um, well, it's got it's, it's, it's remarkably heavy. Mm. It's lot 1255. It's a heavy there ram. There we go. Of, extra solid bronze from the same source as the veronica venus artworks here's two by william frederick mitchell marine artist so there we have hms medina and you can see that being a postcard can't you yes. printed as a postcard he put his reference number on each one <laughs> signed and dated 1912 it's in with one of hms victory so two together in the lot there lot 1634 and there are some other works from the same source throughout the sale of pictures um then dragging round was there anything down there that, oh this caught your eye didn't it peter brooks don't stretch cartoon i'm oh. stretching cartoonist for the times i think this is fun so it's cat and mouse as you can see it's yeah. an original pen and ink by him um this is again we're it's, it's insect dirt day today these are look dead insects trapped between the glass and the work but they're just brush off so otherwise it's in good condition and this is just dirt, so it's not sort of usable, ready to go. I think the estimate's around about 100, 150, that sort of area. Lot 1617. Got the ha -ha, That's you? him. The ha-ha is his very recognisable sort of hand. Um, both originals, so so quite nice, those. Um, more pots and pans and things down there. Oh, we liked this, didn't we? It's quite fun, and, and especially as it's Halloween coming 1364. up. 1364. It's yes. batty, isn't it? It is batty. There we are. This is a stylized bat. It's yeah. Kaiser's Inn. I quite like the detail on the on the. Bottom. Yeah, we've got something like honesty pattern or yeah. in in it. Mm. Um, it's Kaiser's Inn, Austrian pewter ware, secessionist in in manner and style. Lot thirteen sixty four. Mm. Our expert value has said sixty to eighty pounds on that, <laughs> which um, again seems seems okay. Doesn't seem out of the way. Uh, I'm sort of casting my eye down here, but um, not focusing on any individual item. You like the calendar down there didn't you no, well no not particularly but i no, i think it's it amusing out. so there's plenty of raunchy Lots calendars too uh, yes some silver we did like we picked out oh yes you picked out i'll just talk about it now um but i just thought these were so pretty they are so 1812 by hammer of bergen norwegian coffee spoons and just pretty as you say and enameled so in we look is that a little bruise there i think that's a tiny bruise on that purple one um but essentially very nice condition makes you mm. want to have a cup of coffee in a dainty little coffee can doesn't it to yes. use your spoon you'd have to take, take sugar well, otherwise true. you wouldn't need the spoon would you what about brandy why would you put the spoon in brandy <laughs> <laughs> You're making Arty go along. I am. Uh, also picked out uh, this catalogued uh, by Roger as a cafe au lait pot. It's um, very heavy, isn't it? So if you had a pair, if you had the coffee pot with the spout coming out here, you, that would be for the coffee and this would be for the milk. Um, sometimes they get called chocolate pots, but strictly speaking, a chocolate pot, the knob is removable and you can put a stirring spoon in to stir the chocolate. Either way, it's a pleasing form. It's Queen Anne in style but not of the period. It dates to 1910. And then also interesting, it's Britannia standard, which is the higher standard of silver. So our normal silver, 925 parts of silver out of a thousand. Britannia standard from memory is 950 parts of silver. Mm. So it's a superior quality silver. Um, yeah, not a bad thing. And the that handle is made of? Wood. A wooden. Yeah, that's a wooden handle. Mm. Um, we don't Sorry. have any issues with that. Estimate 250, 350. Not a bad little pot. Nice. Um, then you pick this out, lot uh, blah, 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 1840. I think you did, actually. Did I? I said yes. there's a marriage cup and you grabbed it. It's been inscribed. <laughs> it says Arthur Barford to commemorate Lowe of Chester from Gerald Saunders, 1977. Whatever that's all about. And so, yes, so a modern marks, 1977. Nice, good, solid one, though. Um, the double cups, gilt inside. Hmm. There we go. And then here's a rummage lot. This is quite fun. This is um, lot. 1809. 
and it says a quantity of silver and white metal. So what's silver? That's silver. It's English hallmark, so we call it silver. Little source boat there. What's white metal? Well, things that aren't silver. So this <laughs> is looks like a WMF, Weiner Metallwerkfabriken or something like that, German. Uh, it's not silver. It's it's a plated piece. It's not even white metal, which suggests silver that is not English hallmark. This is just plated. Um, yeah, WMF, sort of Art Nouveau style wares. So you get that. You get a English silver, sort of early George V mustard pot. That's mm. that's quite a nice shape. Yeah. You get a matchbox holder yes. that is English silver. He said, yes, it is. But you need to track the matchbox down to fit it. It's so nice you set. might need I a like vintage that. matchbox. Yes. You get, this looks to me to be Indian. Look at that lovely cobra handle. Mm. Uh, then we've got elephants and... Tigers, tigers hunting elephants and other animals in the forest um that looks to be very much to me indian we would call that white metal because i'm sure that's silver but not hallmark it's probably low grade um you get an Eng a victorian no less engine turned silver christening can you get a tea strainer <laughs> made from i would say that's plate silver plate Drop your tea bags in or I'll strain your tea leaves in, I guess. Mm. You get a, I was going to say this is silver. Yes, it is English silver bowl of indeterminate size. You get a continental, I would say. Probably plate, but it, oh, maybe French. It's got a little head mark on it there. Mm. Um, jug. An Indian bowl, white metal. Pear. Yes, pair of English silver toast racks, a silver cigarette case. Well, this is going on, isn't it? Yeah. Another jug. We used to ask for it. No, a it's pair of brushes. So, so, um, so why would what a man put of stuff? all of this in together? Because it's not worth selling. It's hard to split this down. I mean, you could have done a lot of the jugs, maybe, and then maybe, uh, yeah, you could break it down a bit more. But he said two to three hundred pounds. It'd probably make nearer the three to four. Mm. But yeah, it's a bit of a fiddly lot to break down, and it'll kind of make its money. And it's not really a obviously sort of individual lot where a collector is going to just want one item from it it's no. kind of a bit bitty so i think that's why he's done that yeah. oh the um hermes it's so hermes. funny isn't it? the yes, hermes over there on the uh, wall. waistcoat now i think it's fishing but maybe it's hunting i don't know but mm. uh yeah, it's quite something it's it? um it is quite something size 52 so, apparently yes but is that european size i guess so i would have thought so italian Still. size lambskin it says Yes, it's very soft, isn't Annual, it? Annual lambskin, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty good condition. Yes. So, uh, oh, yeah, look at that. Very smart, isn't it? What I are mean, these for? Bit, uh, good question. These for, for your... Oh, and then there's a zip. Look. A zip. Ooh. What you put in there? Your parachute. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's, um, uh, it's a marvellous no, thing, No, you can't that. have it. <laughs> it's a marvellous thing. We can hide things in it. Yes. So, well, there we go. There's a very interesting... And the estimate's quite modest as well. Uh, clocks, let's quickly do one of these. Uh, it's not the most remarkable wall clock ever seen. In fact, it's reasonably unremarkable. 1382, I thought I'd show you. We talk about these clocks all the time. Um, so this one... Um, Painted dial, mahogany, it's it's faded a bit. Look, the dial's all cracked. Um, how do you get at it? Well, normally, oh, this is not a good example to have chosen. Normally you pull out the pegs here and they are wooden pegs and you pull them out and oh, you lift this. it out and get them. I'm gonna, I'm regretting it already actually because there we go, they're out. So then once you pull the pegs out, you can lift it out Gosh. and get at the movement and actually, not too bad a movement that let's take the pendulum out why do we do that we take the pendulum out to stop it getting broken when it's being transported but but presumably whoever was uh, transporting it didn't know or didn't care so we unscrew the bell <laughs> sorry here we go this is great and we lift off the pendulum there and then that steel ribbon at the top doesn't get snapped by the pendulum swinging around when it's transported and, and looked at by people and then we've got a rectangular-ish back plate when they're tapered like an a that's more desirable mm. but still look a twin fusée movement what does that mean well you see these cones here with the chains oh, yes. that's a single fusée if you've got a barrel and one if you've got two one is for the timekeeping the other one is for the striking so you know it's a clock rather than a timepiece and two winding holes through the dial also give you that clue because 
one is for winding one and one's for winding the other. So you could just have it wound to tell the time and not strike, which would then not wake you up in the middle of the night, hmm. or you could run both. So not a bad clock, but not the best, but it gives you the whole clock idea. idea which now, now, we haven't mentioned these. The we mentioned them in a video before, so didn't we? They but were they're mentioned actually in a video in when there were a huge quantity, all apparently one lot, but in fact they've been split into lots of four. And they're catalogued as Middle Eastern, possibly 12th century. Gosh, right. Um, at least the lot that I looked at. That one's 1396. Yeah, I looked at this one, 1393. Yeah. Which said estimate um, 1 to 200 um, Islamic terracotta pots. So uh, there we go. There's quite a few of those scattered through the cell. Yeah. So anyway, that's um, enough smalls, I think. Pretty bored of our tears. Let's. Um, and look at the furniture. So we were heading for furniture, but then on the way, someone spotted something. <laughs> Thelwell. Uh, these are the Bezic Thelwell figures. Um, I think they do they, This is Pony Express. Speaks for itself. Um, oh, sorry, I'm moving. Okay. That looks less Pony Express-like, doesn't it? That's called Kickstart. <laughs> I mean, they're fun, aren't they? they uh, are this fun. is unnamed. It'll have a name, but it's not. If you had a Shetland it's pony, not got it. As a and child. this is something else. Oh, this is a different form because it's more. It's called I forgive you, but it's more yeah. the resin. It's not the pottery. Mm. So these ceramic ones are in with these others here, 1465. There's a whole host of basic horses here, 1462. So what makes a basic horse interesting? Um, it's down to the type of horse it is, and some were produced in larger numbers than others. And then it's down to the colourway. So um, I'm guessing. What's that? Is that a Palomino? Uh, that's a skewbald. That's a skewbald. So a skewbald is probably scarcer than this brown colour that is called a dun. Um, I, well, I would imagine he's a, a bay or something, but he's a shire horse, isn't yeah, he, I know. as well? Well, I would have, might have guessed that. Duffel so, Grey. what's that one? Um, that's a, that's a good question. It's sort of like a palomino, but um, pony. somebody's going to You're quite me. rude about a lot of horses we see, aren't you? Yes. I don't know that any of these are of enough sophistication suit madam uh, anyway basic horse is all about the colorway and the, the breed and then the size so you get the right combination they can be very desirable or they can be quite routine lot 13 I what did, was it i did say oh you did say i'm sorry i said it was 1462 thank you i'm sorry uh, for not listening right moving through quickly because this is all the one we've done uh, and into the furniture room um, just a few things we picked up on. We get bits and pieces from film companies sometimes who supply things to, um, uh, well, movie companies and the like. Uh, and also the, the, you get people who get things from television companies. This was, look, Anglia Television. <laughs> That's great. What were the Anglia programmes in, back in the 70s? Oh, trying to think. Was Sales Century Anglia? I don't know. I think it might have been on Nicholas Parsons. Anyway, 1126 is an Anglia Television light. And it's now estimated 150 to 200 pounds. Yep. A bit of fun. Oh, um, now this. Um, I just think this is great fun. Look at, look at him. Yeah. The devil. You're not bothered. No, I'm not bothered, but it's 11.43 for those that are. Oh, I just think he's funny. Um, and then uh, we looked briefly. This was in the fine, so I didn't go. Such George III's supper table. I still think it's a rather nice thing. 11.51 back in as a re-offer. Philip Stark. We've got a couple of Philip Stark chairs in the sale. Uh, 1152, this is called the um, Doctor Impossible Chair. You can Google it and you'll see I'm not making it up. Estimate two to three hundred. And over here, this one, this metal frame one, is called the, uh, no, that's Mr. Impossible. This is Doctor Sonderbar, sort of like soundbar, I suppose. <laughs> I guess if you sit on it and um, vibrate, it might sing. I don't know. Anyway, it's 1139, estimate five to eight hundred. Do you like your Philip Stark? Uh, nice little Georgian chest there. All sorts of oddities across the back. Um, classical water car carriers. Strange fiberglass columns. I think they came from our film company. Same lady as that picture I featured at the beginning. Same painter did this. Looks like it was for a High Court judge. Because look, we've got all the we've got his wig or a QC. We've got a brief here for a QC. Uh, we've got law books uh, and various other bits and pieces. So that is not. 1667. You and sit to round it all look down and sit down. I could do sitting down. I can. Oh. I've been home here two days ago and it's um. <laughs> she's making me do this. Pain. <laughs> 1157. Oh, it's this nice armchair and it's estimated two to three hundred pounds and I'm sure it's very comfortable. Uh, so all sorts of other goods in sale. As I always say, have a good look at the website. Send us any questions and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much.